I've gotten a lot of requests to demonstrate how I make calcium sulfite, since it's not really something you can buy. On that note, today I'm going to demonstrate how to make calcium sulfite and calcium carbonate, since the synthesis is about the same. To get started, I dissolve a quarter mole of sodium sulfite and a quarter mole of sodium carbonate in two different beakers. In each of the two beakers on the left, I dissolve a quarter mole of calcium chloride. If you're more familiar with grams than moles, I've included those on the top as well. The sodium salts of carbonate and sulfite are very soluble, but their calcium salts are not. With that in mind, the idea here is to synthesize both by a double displacement reaction where the target insoluble product can be filtered off and collected. I decide to make the calcium sulfite first, and to do that, I pour my solution of sodium sulfite into my solution of calcium chloride. A white precipitate of calcium sulfite immediately forms, and this is stirred thoroughly. This same reaction can also be done between sodium metabosulfite and calcium hydroxide. I next move on to my calcium carbonate, and I do it the same way by pouring the sodium carbonate into to my calcium chloride solution. You'll notice a precipitate doesn't immediately form in this one, and it actually takes a good deal of stirring to get this reaction to go to completion. The byproduct of both of these reactions is plain salt water, which I then filter away in the next step. On a side note, most calcium carbonate made industrially is made by bubbling CO2 through calcium hydroxide, but that's not a very easy thing to do at home. Anyway, I first tried vacuum filtration to isolate my product, but calcium sulfite and carbonate form extremely fine particulate in solution that's really hard to filter off. They both kind of just gummed up the vacuum filter, so I opt for gravity filtration through a coffee filter instead. This method of filtration is way faster and easier, and typically vacuum filtration is not a good idea with ultra-fine particulate. These are both rinsed very thoroughly to get rid of any residual sodium chloride. They're then both transferred to drying dishes and dried at 70 degrees Celsius overnight. The resulting dry masses of salt are transferred to a mortar and powdered thoroughly. Calcium chloride in particular has a tendency to adhere very stubbornly to glass surfaces, so keep that in mind. After each one is thoroughly powdered, the process is done and I can transfer each one to its respective storage vessel. I use two old aspirin containers for storage, and you can pretty much use whatever you want for storage as these salts are very stable and not hydroscopic. I also got an extremely high yield for both as this reaction is incredibly efficient. My yield for calcium carbonate was slightly lower, and that's only because I couldn't scrape all of it out of the drying dish. In any case, that's the entire process. I hope you found this interesting, or at least informative, and regardless, if you liked this and want to see more science, consider giving me a follow.